So today we're going to take a look at a Microsoft Teams update that might not be the best idea Microsoft ever had and how to get around it, some of the pitfalls that you might want to avoid when it comes out. So stick around for all of that. Just very quickly before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient, help make their employees' lives easier, happening to get more out of Microsoft 365. We've got free training linked in the description below, or if you already know you want to work together and want to know how we could work together, see if you're a good fit, then go straight to book a call using the link in the description below as well. But on to this update. So Microsoft announced this a while ago, and in between me wanting to do a video on it and show why it might not be a great idea, they've actually updated it to make it slightly less of a bad idea. And so what is this update that I'm talking about? It's Microsoft's plan to automatically hide inactive channels, which like most things without getting too political, good intentions don't always lead to great outcomes. So yeah, we need a way of tidying up our teams and channels. Maybe if you've got sprawl, but I would say the sprawl's the problem and just hiding them automatically isn't actually the solution. We don't need a tech solution to that. We just need a better structured solution. That's usually what we start with at me time is if you can get the smallest number of teams and the smallest number of channels that you can get away with, then it makes everything else easier or irrelevant. And you don't need a feature like this because you all of the channels will be active. And if they're inactive, then you would move your files out of there and like just get rid of the channel full stop, not just hide it. Which is why with good intentions, this is probably isn't even needed. So when it first came out, Microsoft was gonna hide channels automatically for you, which I'll go on to why that's a bad idea. And looks like when I came to make this video, I went back onto Message Center. They've actually had some feedback from other admins and actually made it an opt-in. So it'll just suggest channels that you might wanna hide but you might be saying, well, why is that even a bad thing? So the first port of call for you to get into Teams channels, if you're not already, is that should be the main thing that is opting in or opting out of notifications, should be whether you show or hide the channel. If you're used to using Teams chats or overusing Teams chats, you can save a massive amount of mental clutter interrupting people, just getting work done. If you move those into Teams channels, as a general rule of thumb, you don't want more teams or more channels you've got people in the organization. It's definitely as another general rule of thumb, you probably want five to 10 people per channel. So I see like 10 person organizations with 10 teams and 10 channels, like you've got way too many places, you're gonna lose stuff. So let's rein that right back. And even 300 person organizations could probably get away with one team and a few channels and even enterprise size. Yeah, we need to pick, pick it apart a little bit more in terms of group of people, but in general, you can manage with way more people in a team and way more people, way more threads of the information going on in a channel than people think. And it's just like working out in an open plan office, digital equivalent of open plan office. If you want to know more about that, then check out our free training. But so the channel, if you've already structured it right, there should only be a channel if there's posts on it. And you should have already thought about that before. Like, is this subject enough that people are going to put posts in there? We want to cut out internal email. We want to cut out Teams chat, private group chat. If it's to do with that subject, if it's to do with work, it goes in the channel. So we shouldn't have a channel that's dormant anyway in our initial thinking of how to set up teams and channels. And so the next step is then thinking like for each individual person or each individual role, are they going to be able to manage with that amount of channels in their view? So again, ideally, any individual shouldn't have more than a handful, five to 10 max channels that they need to keep track of in their view. Otherwise, there's too many places they need to keep track of stuff and stuff will get lost or put in the wrong place. All the things we want to avoid, avoid duplication of effort, avoid people deciding, oh, does it go there? Or does it go there? It's like, it should be really clear. And once we've got to that stage, then whether stuff's in their view or not is the first step of them manage, managing their notifications. So say for argument's sake, someone is in logistics and they're in a logistics channel 
and they never work with sales and there's a sales channel they you would expect the people in logistics to hide the sales channel and show the, the logistics channel and so then if you've shown the channel it's in your list and you can see it on the sidebar if someone does at logistics or at the channel name everyone that's shown logistics is going to get notified about that post and anyone that's hidden the logistics channel won't get notified about that post that's the first way you should manage notifications when you're using teams channels without going into any of the other notification settings because they'll just mess up up by mistake and so that allows like most of the general stuff it's just like if you wanted to get everyone's attention in an open plan office you might be like oh can everyone just come over here for a second i've got something to say and you just want to broadcast it to the whole department or the whole bit of the process or everyone that's involved and that's what channel mentions are handy for likewise if someone else in another bit of the business in another open plan office is getting all the salespeople together and saying hey if all the salespeople come together i just want to quick chat or mention something then you don't want to get interrupted by that because you don't work in that department that's what sharing and hiding the channels does for you and so then if you have gone through and got your structure got everything there and say a channel sort of dropped off usage but is still used so but and then someone did an app mention channel mention and teams has already automatically hidden it for you then no one's going to get notified about that or you don't know who's going to get notified because and they don't know if they're going to get notified because it's been hidden for them automatically and so that's what microsoft had planned and literally hopefully looks like they're going to roll it back so it's optional but i would say we never want to automatically hide dormant channels because either you've gone through that process up front and decided which teams and channels you need to be in if they then go dormant or inactive as microsoft have called it we want to make sure either we need those files that are in the channel so we need to go and move those somewhere else that they're accessible or we just and, and we need to just get rid of that channel completely or there's conversations happening that aren't going into the channel we need to put those back into the channel so either they might have migrated into teams chat or they might have migrated over into email they need to go back into the channel otherwise there's no point having a channel so either we need to move those files into another channel where the conversation is happening or we need to move them into archive or we need to put them somewhere but like just hiding a channel for everybody just because a channel's inactive probably isn't the best idea even though it's probably made with good intentions so if you're new to teams and you want to get more out of teams and channels we've got a full course here that you can check out it's made using the old look and feel of teams but all the same principles apply um, and it's free on youtube so go and check that out if you haven't already and if you've got any value out of this video remember to give it a thumbs up before you leave click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out new ones coming out every week at least and thanks for watching so far we'll see you in the next one